Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to our Tuesday night Karis Daily Live Bible Study. My name is Mike Pickett, and I'm going to be your host tonight along with Carrie Pickett, and she's uh, going to be sharing with us this evening. I think actually both of us will be sharing a little bit together, but thank you so much for joining us. I believe that God has an amazing word for you tonight because His word is so amazing. Uh, before we jump into the word, I just want to go through a couple of uh, quick announcements, and then we'll go ahead and get started right away. We want to remind you that the Karis Daily Live Bible Studies are Monday through Friday, uh, multiple times throughout the week to make sure that we can have more people be able to tune in. So Mondays and Fridays, they're, they're at 10 a.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays, they're at 6 p.m. And every Wednesday morning, they're at 7 a.m. Those times are all mountain times. I want to remind you that this is a live Bible study, so you will be able to post any questions. So as we go through the teachings tonight, if you have any questions, please feel free to, whatever platform you're on, enter those questions, and uh, we'll get to as many of those as possible towards the end of our time together in the teaching time. I believe, like, like I said, that this is going to be, a, this teaching time is going to inspire some great things in your heart, some really good questions that'll come out. Um, a, couple, a couple of, uh, of quick notes for, for y'all. I um, want to remind you that uh, you are able to get the notes from this live Bible study. So if you go on to www.awmi.net backslash study, uh, you'll be able to receive the notes to this live Bible study the following Monday, as well as you're entered into a drawing to receive a free gift. And that free gift, the tonight's giveaway, is this book called Life Foundations. This is written by both Carrie and myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, part of, um, really it's part of the story of our lives in terms of some revelation that God has given us about just some basic principles on how we grow in the Word together, how we teach our children to grow in the Word, and uh, just, just kind of a life message for us. So uh, this, is a, this is a really good book, and I believe it's going to be a real amazing blessing to you as well. So last week we, had, we did the same thing. We had Jeremy Pearsons with us. And uh, I know it was an amazing time with, yep. with you, Andrew, and Jeremy. Mm -hmm. And so we, we had several winners uh, from that as well. Because so. he had like a whole stack of products. I was trying to sneak some home. Didn't work. No. Yeah, so is. you guys won. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to just go through the, and list off the names of the winners. Um, so it's Ronald Beasley, Evan Hudson, Brian Sanford, Chana Cox, David Goot, Olivia, I'm sorry, Rachel Olive, Bonnie Bryant, and Kathy Zhang. So you will all be uh, con contacted by our ministry, and we'll make sure that we get that free material out to you. And thank you so much for getting the notes to the live Bible study, uh, and also for entering in uh, to, win to win those different prizes. I believe that word is going to be an incredible seed in your hearts. You're going to see growth and transformation in your own lives. I want to remind you of a, of a couple things happening here at Karis over this next season. Praise God, we are coming up on, up on Christmas. It's going to be an amazing season, and we have the heart of Christmas here at Karis Bible, at Karis Bible College, and that's coming up this weekend, December 8th to the 10th, and I'll tell you, if you have never been up here for an event before, you are missing out on something awesome. You want to come. This is a great time of year to see all the lights that are around here to see uh, this incredible, incredible story about the fourth wise men. Also, we have a live nativity and that's going on from December 15th through the 17th. We actually have live animals that will be here on campus. You can drive through, drink hot chocolate, um, see the live animals. It's a great time of interaction. Again, seeing all the lights and seeing just uh, just the, the heart of Christmas as you, as you drive through. And then finally, we have our GTC happening in Phoenix, and that's from January 4th to January 6th. So we encourage you, if you're going to be in that area, it's a great time of fellowship. We're going to have Jim Baker as our chief, as one of our chief speakers, along with Andrew Womack. It's going to be a wonderful time of, great, of three days in the Word. And finally, I want to remind you that if you want to partner with this ministry, this ministry is accomplishing so much all over the world. We encourage you to go to the website, www. Uh, awmi.net and you'll be able to sign up to become a partner. It's, uh, it, it's a great opportunity to wherever you are, wherever you are in the world to sow into this ministry and help us pr pr uh, get the gospel out to all the nations. So and then finally, I'm sorry, I know I said finally last time, but this is my last one. <laughs> uh, we want to remind you that we do have prayer minister, ministers standing by and available for you even right now. 
you can give us a call at 719-635-1111. They are there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if you have a prayer need, please do not struggle on your own. Please reach out. We are our body of Christ here to support one another. So without further ado, I want to turn this over to the beautiful Carrie Pickett. <laughs> and uh, she's going to be sharing with us an incredible word. And so thank you so much, Carrie, for your heart. Hey. Well, so I was supposed to um, minister and host tonight, and um, Mike's like, can I do it with you? And I was like, yes, please. So we enjoy we enjoy ministering the Word of God together. So we're actually going to tag team and just share some things with you. So I'm going to teach on the abundance of God. And this is one thing that has just really been on my heart. You know, for Mike and I both, we have a relationship with God that we share as husband and wife and how we are raising our children, but also just the individual things that God is also speaking to us. So I've been doing a lot of study on the topic of abundance. And the reason I started this actually was, um, was Andrew. <laughs> um, because he and I were actually interested enough, we were talking about, um, uh, prosperity one day and he was telling me he says Carrie listen you need to have a revelation of prosperity he said more than you have now he said because we were actually we were talking about um, taking up offerings and stuff and he says you got to be able to have a revelation to be able to then inspire that level of faith right because you want to be able to activate faith within people so that they can they can participate on the Word of God and then see miracles in their finances and so I just started um, just really gathering uh, verses on abundance, but it became more than just about prosperity mm -hmm. and giving and finances, because I Amen. think that's where a lot of times people go is when you talk about <laughs> prosperity, then they just think of finances. Mm -hmm. And prosperity is so much bigger than finance. It's actually a bigger topic of the, the extent of who God is. Amen. And so, which kind of led me to the aspect of talking about and really focusing on abundance. And abundance includes prosperity of finances, includes the aspect of giving and receiving and sowing and reaping and all of that, but the aspect of abundance of who God is. And so I just wanna go through a couple different things tonight and introduce you to some concepts. And I think number one, the thing is when we talk about abundance, we need to focus first on the author of abundance. Because before we start talking about the Christian life of abundance that we're supposed to live or a mentality that we can have, we have to understand that he is abundance. And so when we talk about the Lord, when we talk about his nature and his character, we need to look at, again, the essence of who he is. So he calls himself Jehovah Jireh. He calls himself El Shaddai. And he calls himself the great I am. Mm -hmm. And so we see this attrib these attributes of God and his nature, and that's what is so important. Amen. And so when we talk about the, uh, the, the character of God, right? If we don't know who God is, then the enemy can lie to you about who you are. That's right. And that is a super important revelation because if you don't know your God, then you're going to believe that you're like the world. But if you and I have received Christ, then we receive the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So in Colossians chapter two, verse nine and 10, it talks about in him, talking about Jesus dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And it says, now we are made complete in him. So that means that the fullness of God, the fullness of who he is now lives within us. And even that scripture talks about the fullness. It doesn't say the little bitty pity portion of God that lives in you now, right? The, the little bitty por portion that he has grace on you today. No, it talks about the fullness of God. And when we understand that about God, then how we start to interact changes the way we see ourselves. You know, when you look back at uh, when God first, first created man, he created us in the likeness of himself. Yes. And, and, and again, what, what an incredible privilege and honor it is for you and I to be created in the image of God. But of course, when Adam sinned, he lost that revelation. He lost that understanding. He became much more focused on his carnality than he did on his spirituality. And he, and he forgot the fact that he looked just like God. And it wasn't until Jesus came and once again revealed to us the nature of our father. And so that we began to realize that, <clears throat> that because of who we are and how we're made in the image of God, in the very image of God, that in us li lives abundance, if in us lives the same spirit that lived on the inside of Jesus. You know, the, the word says in 1 John 4, 17, as he is, so are we in this world. 
understanding that his spirit is now alive on, on the inside of us. And what Jesus restored to you and I is that the fullness of his abundant life living on the inside of us, that his nature, his life, his abilities, his, his way of thinking, his re- the, the same relationship that Jesus had with the Father mm-hmm. is the same relationship that now you and I are called to have with the Father. All those different things that, that we lost uh, in the garden, we, Jesus has now restored because of his cross. Mm-hmm. And when we, start, we begin to realize that Jehovah Jireh, our provider, the Lord God, our provider becomes so much more. We realize that everything that we need is in Christ. Everything that we need for life and godliness comes through the knowledge of him. It comes out of our relationship with him. No longer do we look to our neighbors to affirm us. No longer do we need our family to, to, to accept us. No longer do we need other people to say, oh, add a boy or good job. It doesn't matter what other people think about us anymore. It's not that we don't care about other people. It's just that we, don't, we do not rely upon them for our confidence. Our confidence comes from our relationship with the Lord and our relationship with the Word. Yeah. And when we, when we truly understand that, that presence of Jehovah Jireh, our provider living on the inside of us, who's constantly fellowshipping with us, mm-hmm. we, have, we also realize that we've been given everything that is necessary for success in this life through His Word, through the knowledge of Him, mm-hmm. through the presence of, of our God. We start growing in Him. We start discovering all the amazing things yeah. that He has done for you and I. Amen. I'll tell you something. I have tried to do a lot of things on my own and failed miserably. But when I try to do, when I do things in the strength of the Lord, you can't help but to walk in success. And you, when you begin to realize that everything I need is found in Christ. And you know why this is so important is because if we don't know who God is, Amen. then again, we're going to lean on our own understanding. And that's why it says in Proverbs chapter 3, um, in verse 5 and 6, it talks about, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And this is really, really keen because if we lean on our own understanding, you're always going to be limited by your experiences and your past and who you know and your education. And then, and then of course, everybody's at different levels of understanding. And that's where a lot of the comparison comes in. And so when we're trusting in the Lord, though, and we're able to lean on him, then you're leaning into all of his goodness and all of his abundance and all of his wisdom. And now it's not about what you do and don't know because you're now leaning into him. And that's when we start tapping into the supernatural. And what I've seen with um, with the, the tactics of the enemy is he will always get you to focus on what you don't have. Right. And so this idea and this concept of a lack, this mentality of lack, and you'll meet people that's just like, this can sound like lack. Well, you know, it's, it's all I have, you know, it's all I know. Well, this is, you know, well, we'll be paying on this mortgage for the rest of our lives. And well, I don't know if that's possible. Uh, my parents were poor. I, I'm going to be poor. <laughs> I'm going to be poor. My kids are going to be poor. <laughs> right. And so you can just start to hear like this lack mentality, because again, people are looking at themselves, their situations, their pasts, or even their current yeah. situations or opportunities, and then say, well, this is as good as it's going to get well I guess I should just be happy with this you know, and it's just like and then in that spirit of lack well we don't have this and we don't have that and then you start to compare yourself to those who you feel have more yeah. and the enemy's trying to get you to constantly devalue what you have who you know all all of those things he makes it about the natural where when we understand the abundance of God and who he is right? And that your God is never lacking. He always, this is daily are his benefits, right? And so we look at the the abundance of God. And then we realize the abundance of God, then you and I have to make a decision. And it's, I'll say it's, it's, it's not just a decision um, in the sense of, okay, I'm going to believe, but I can even say it's an attitude change. You're going to have to start having a different attitude of, you know what? I'm not missing, lacking or broken or That's dysfunctional. Right. Amen. No, I have an almighty God and he lives within me. So it's not just understanding the abundance of God. It's understanding that abundance lives in you and I today. So you're not this broken, sinful, uneducated failure. No, you are a child of the living God, full of the abundance 
abundance of the kingdom of God. And now within that positional place, you now have access to all the abundance of God's character, nature, right. and promises for you and I today. Amen. And that should start developing within inside of us an attitude. And that attitude, what does it do? It produces this faith so that when you see the promise of God, you don't say, oh, well, of course that's for him. Well, of course, Andrew Womack teaches this. Of course, God does that for him because, you know, he's so spiritual. And you, and you disqualify yourself from the promises of God. And the enemy's right there saying, yep, that's not for you. It's for someone else, but maybe later on for you. No, this abundance creates an attitude of faith and say, you know what? That's mine today. This promise is mine. This healing is mine. This prosperity is mine because it's not about me. It's about who lives within me. Amen. And I recognize my abundance. And that's, that's such a powerful concept. You know, Jesus changed everything. Well, the trajectory that mankind was on was so detrimental because literally we were in a place where we could do nothing on our own. Not, it wasn't a matter of not, us not having abundance. We, all we had was total lack <laughs> because all we had was the spirit of man living on the inside of us. And when we understand what he's accomplished, it's absolutely incredible. If you open your Bibles to Romans chapter 8, verse number 32, um, it, I, I love this statement because uh, there's, there's so much I wish we could expand upon, but this is such a powerful statement. It says this, it says, He that spared not his own son, but, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? You know what that word all actually means? It means all. It means all things, everything that we need for life and godliness, everything that we need for success in this life, it's already been provided in Christ Jesus. Yeah. We, we, we lack nothing. We're missing nothing. We're not broken. We're not hindered in our spirit. Everything that is necessary to accomplish every single goal and the vision that God has for your life already lives on the inside of you because of his abundant love, because of his abundant life. Jesus demonstrated that he, you know, Jesus lived his life out of abundance. Every single situation he came across, the spirit of God was never surprised and never shocked. He always had the ability to answer any question. He always had the ability to address any problem. He, he, had, he brought wisdom, he brought understanding, he brought clarity. He was able to teach the scribes, even, even at a very young age. Mm -hmm. his, his ability to pull out of his spirit, to pull, to pull from the mind that, uh, that, uh, of Christ living on the inside of him, empowered him to walk in that abundance that God, God has prepared, prepared for each and every single one of you and, and for me. And when we understand that, we take a step back and we, we realize that, you know, the abundance of God creates such a level of peace in our lives mm -hmm. because we understand that nothing takes God by surprise. We understand that God knows every single day in our lives, yes. he has them all written in his book. And before we ever lived one, he wrote them all out. So that means that we can walk in his abundance, not trusting in our own abilities, but trusting in his ability living on the inside of us. Just like Jesus was able to react according to the spirit of God, you and I can do the same thing. No matter the situation, no matter the problem, no matter the issues that are going around uh, on around us, it doesn't matter if it's at work, if it's at home, if it's at church, if it's at w wherever it might be, it doesn't make a difference. The wisdom of God is there and we can pull from that abundant life living on the inside of us. The question is, are we, are we gonna believe that? Are we gonna trust in that? Are we gonna trust in Jehovah Jireh or are we gonna trust in our own abilities and our own strength? We have that choice to make it every single day. Yeah, and I think this is why the enemy tries to get us to um, be distracted so much by the situations around us because he's trying to tell us, he's trying to let situations tell us what is not possible. So you always hear the enemy talking the language, well, this is as good as it's gonna get, or, oh, the cancer's too far gone, or the situation is too insurmountable, um, there's just no hope. And so the enemy always talks a language of lack. He always talks a language where he, the, the situation is too big for you to have victory, right? Your marriage is too far gone. Your children are too rebellious. Your debt is too great, right? The diagnosis and the cells are too far advanced, right? He's always trying to bring this aspect of you just don't have what it takes to get through this situation. 
where God says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. It's just this dynamic of being able to lean into the Lord and say, I don't care what the declarations of lack are in this world. My God is more than enough. My God is well able. And so we start to have this attitude. I want to read this verse out of Psalms 130 in verse 7. And it says this, and in the, uh, it says, O Israel, put your hope in the Lord. It says, for with the Lord is mercy, and another one says, a loving devotion, and with him is plenteous redemption. Another version says, abundant redemption. And I love this, I love this dynamic of he's saying, listen, with the Lord is loving devotion, is, is, with, is with that abundant mercy. And it says, in redemption, in abundance. See, when God loved you, he didn't love you half-heartedly. When God saved you, he didn't save you halfway. When God decided that he was going to shed his blood and by his stripes we were healed, it, was, it wasn't for just certain diseases. Mm -hmm. It was for everything. I mean, that's the goodness, that's just the goodness of God towards you today. And one of the things that we have to adjust within our attitude is we don't have this attitude of, well, I am less than. You are not less than because you have the spirit of God living inside of you. This is why uh, David said in Psalms chapter 23, and sometimes we'll look at verses and you can become kind of so familiar with them that you don't realize the, the authority in these verses. And so in Psalms, in verse 23, in verse 1, David starts saying, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So he's saying, listen, God has this ability to lead you, right? Not just for the sake of he's the shepherd and we have to follow. He's saying, as the shepherd, all the provision is found in following God. So in following the Lord, that's where we're going to find the fulfillment and the abundance of everything that you and I need. And if you've watched the live Bible studies, Andrew actually had talked about this, I think it was almost maybe a year ago, but he said this, I shall not want. And he talked about the study of looking at want and want also meant this, I shall not fail, lessen or decrease. See, not only does God's abundance towards you, God's abundance carries you so that it carries you in a place where you don't have to constantly worry about failure and lack. Why? Because you're tapped into the wisdom of God and the life of God and the energy of God and the supernatural power. You don't have to walk around feeling like you're a failure or constantly wondering, well, I wonder what's going to fall apart today. Stop talking like that about your life and your situations and your loved ones, right? I wonder what I'm going to do wrong today. I wonder, you know, this dynamic, right? Yeah. So you're not going to fail, lessen, or decrease. And that's why then he talks about, he leads me, he leads me, excuse me, he makes me to lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. And so this, you see this restoration power, you see this leading power. It's like this, again, following after the Lord, all of the provision is found in that connection and, and surrender in your relationship with him. That's powerful today. Because if we're trying to do our own thing in our own way, responding to life with our own wisdom, then you're going to find failure. You're going to find want. You're going to find lack. Why? Because you're not tapped into the source of life. Amen. And he's like, he, listen, I'll tell you today, even if you've been depending on your own strength and your own abilities, does God love you? Yes, he does. Is God's grace towards you today? Absolutely. But he will not force his abundance on us when we choose to do our own thing. Amen. He does not force his wisdom. He does not force his will on us. That's why the abundance of God is such a joy to discover and walk in because now it's a choice. You get to choose those things of the Lord. And that's very different from, from the, what the world does. You know, in Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 12, it says, and because, of, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And that's the thing about, about what the world is trying to force. The abundance of the world is trying to force itself upon us. Mm -hmm. It's trying mm -hmm. to steal the gifts that, steal away from us the knowledge of the gifts that God has already placed on the inside of us, the, the work that he has already done, the great accomplishments that Jesus did at the cross. Mm -hmm. And it's up to you and I as well not to, 
to walk in that abundance. So as the iniquity is abounding, the love of God is abounding in our lives. The grace of God is abounding in our lives. The mercy of God is abounding in our lives. The wisdom of God is abounding in our lives. The healing nature of God is abounding in our lives. Yeah. And when things abound, things overflow, mm -hmm. things, <laughs> things rush out. It's like, you know, we, we are the bringers forth of rivers and streams of living water. And when we, when we have that abundance living on the inside of us, you know, when you have an abundance of things, you can very easily give it away. You can very easily go to your neighbor and say, let me tell you about this nature of God and share with them the grace of God, share with them the love of God, share with them the heart and the compassion and the healing nature of God. And that's, the, that's, that's what God is calling us to tell, really know and understand that even though this world is abounding with iniquity, and the word iniquity means sin, it means unrighteousness. Praise God, the righteousness of God abounds on the inside of us. Amen. That we can keep our eyes fixed and focused upon Him because He is the one that has freely given us all things. And when we understand that we have all things, we understand that we are once again equipped for every single situation, every single abundance of iniquity, every single abundance of, of attack that the enemy throws at us. If we're being tempted to be offended, we don't have to be because the love of God abounds in our lives. If we're being tempted to be sick, we don't have to be sick because the healing nature of God abounds in our lives. It abounds to overflowing. Not only are we being healed, but the people who are around us, the people who are closest to us, they're seeing that testimony that we're walking out and they're being inspired as well to truly discover all this abundance for themselves, to walk in that same supernatural nature and power of God. You know, um, you, you think about the upper room with the disciples and when the Holy Spirit came upon them, mm -hmm. All of a sudden, the power of God fill, filled their lives and there was an abundance of uh, people being strong, courageous, brave. I mean, just, just yeah. I mean, it was, there was a lack of self and an abundance of the Spirit of God. Yeah, that was good. And that's, that's what we're talking about here. It's, it's like the abundance of God, of God will, uh, will allow us to lose sight of ourselves. It will allow us to replace the former nature and former desires in our own nature and say, Lord, it's not about what I want anymore. It's about what do you want for me? Because I recognize that in you is greater than anything I could possibly attain in this world. I realize that the riches of this world do not even compare to the knowledge of you. And when we start thinking that way, you know, we, we, it's easy to lay down our lives. It's easy to say, Lord, it's not about what I want because we understand that what we're getting is so much of greater value. It's like, it's like uh, writing a, a, a check for a thousand dollars so that you can get $10 million. You know, we are, we easily lay down what we have so we can get the further abundance that God has prepared for us. Amen. This is why when um, Jesus said in John chapter 10, Verse 10, this is, I mean, again, this is talking about the who he is versus who the enemy is and how we now walk in relationship. It says, and in John chapter 10, verse 10 in the New King James, it says this, it says, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill and destroy. He said, I have come that they may life and they may have it more abundantly. And so even God's just saying, he's like, I'm, I, I don't want to just give you life. I want to give it to you more abundantly. Amen. Like this is the heart of God that you would experience the life of God in an everyday life that's not just a normal, every everyday average life. You're not average. You're not connected, nor do you belong to someone who's average. That is the heart of the Lord. That's why when we look at, and I want to read this real quick. I know we're going to do some questions, but in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, in the Amplified Bible, it says this, and God is able to make all grace. And in context, he was talking about giving yeah. here, right? Mm -hmm. He was talking about giving. He was talking about finances. But what I love is that the financial aspect of abundance is supposed to also be the same abundance that we have in every area of life. You can have an abundant marriage. You can have an abundant family. You can have an abundant career. Why? Because you invite God into it.
and those things aren't you trying to make it abundant and you making it have certain image of what you think success looks like. No, it's surrendered to the Lord. Now what God's able to do with that. That's why I love this is, and God is able to make all grace. It says every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need to be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. <laughs> That's powerful. Isn't that good? It's just this dynamic wow. is for, God's, God's wanting this just lavishness of his abundance. Guys, that's for you this season. It's not just the season, this is your lifestyle. And so I just wanna encourage you tonight, and this is one of the things that we wanted to share, is that if we can understand the heart of God towards us, then you and I have to come to a place where we're gonna change our, our mentality and the way we see ourselves and the way we see situations. You know, you have situations going on in your life right now, and you can either see that it's broken, it's, it's, it's sick, it's frustrating, right? It's evil. Or you could say, you know what? I'm going to look at these situations and I'm going to start speaking the abundant life and promises yeah. of God. Yeah. And then I'm going to, as I'm in these situations, I'm going to see myself victorious because I'm not going to let the enemy come to steal, kill and destroy. I don't let him come in and run and rule and reign. No, I have Christ. And because of that, I don't just have success in this. I have it with such abundance. Now it's a testimony. Now it's a platform for the glory of God. Now the enemy is going to regret anything he ever did because what we invited the presence of almighty God who can take care of anything. Can I just say, no matter what's going on within your life, anything you hold out to the life of God can be healed, restored, delivered. I mean, God can touch anything that you give to him. Today. Amen. And you know what's amazing about that? The principle that we're walking in, we're living in this life right now where we are receiving abundance through faith. Mm -hmm. But there will come a day when we walk into eternity and we can see that abundance around us consistently. Yeah. It's a manifestation because it's an overflow of what was already on the inside of us. We begin seeing it because we'll be in heaven. Mm -hmm. we'll, be, we'll have the abundance of the presence of God. Yeah. We'll have the abundance of, of faith. We'll have the abundance of everything that's necessary for eternity. So this is our opportunity right here while you're on earth, right here, right now. You can walk in an abundance of faith. You can walk in, ab in an abundance of courage. You can come outside of yourself and, and, and just come to a place where you realize, Lord, I realize on the inside of me, I, I realize in me that I don't understand how to live this life, but in your abundance, you've called me to live victoriously. Mm -hmm. and, and as we do that, we actually bring heaven here on earth. Mm -hmm. We begin walking out the same way we'll walk out in eternity because we're walking according to his strength, not according to our strength. And that's ultimately what, he, what the Lord wants. The Lord is for us. He's not against us. Amen. He's provided everything that's necessary for all, for life and godliness, for, for victory, for wisdom, for understanding mm -hmm. everything that's necessary because he loves you and he wants the very best for you. So we're going to go ahead and jump into some questions. Amen. Here. Um, we have some really good ones and thank you all so much for uh, submitting these questions. So Nicole on YouTube asked this question, will God bless anything and everything? having a hard time getting clear answers from him to resign or stay in my current job. Mm -hmm. I want to move forward, but I'm not sure how. Well, I think this is one of the things that's so powerful about relationship with God is that he knows the beginning from the end. And so, you know, when Jesus said, not my will, but yours be done, I think this is one of the things, Nicole, that I would encourage you is that you are seeking the Lord. So that is, that's the number one thing to do. You're seeking the Lord. You're asking for his will. And I believe that God knows exactly where you're supposed to be, right? And also he knows the desires of your heart. And so one of the things that I would do is, you know, there's different ways that you're going to hear from the Lord. But I know for Mike and I, so much of our testimony is what you feel peace with. And so if you don't feel peace to leave, you wait until you have that peace, right? And then God can confirm that peace. Sometimes it's, you can get a scripture and you can get a prophetic word and God will open up new opportunities. But I would encourage you to follow peace today because one of the things is that God does not just bless our pride. Well, I'll do what I want to do and God 
bless it. Now that's not how it is because a life surrendered to the Lord is saying, my job is not mine, my career is not mine, it belongs to you. So when, this is why I look at when it talks about 1 Corinthians, excuse me, when it talks about Philippians chapter four, verse things, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, you can based off what God has told you to do. That's key because sometimes time people will try to take that scripture and just say, okay, I'm going to do and make a decision and then God, you have to bless it, you have to give me the strength. But no, no, actually it's in his will that God then gives you the strength. And so I'm really excited for you because you are doing the right thing. You are seeking the Lord, but follow peace. And I think um, a lot of times we make things a whole lot more complicated than we need to. Mm -hmm. I think it's a matter of as you walk out that peace, just trust that the Lord's going to bless the work of your hands. Trust that people are going to recognize that, that you're blessed, that you're anointed even where you are, even if you don't like where you are, you know something, God can, God will still bless you because you are called to be the light and the salt. And so I encourage you, as Carrie mentioned, just follow that peace that God has given you. So uh, Saradha on Facebook asked this question. Can you please explain how you walk this life out in a practical day-to-day -day life? Well, I think that's when we understand that a day-to-day -day life and practically how do you do this, it's in relationship with God. And you've heard... You've heard us on Live Bible talk about this before, that walking in relationship with God isn't like, okay, so God, this is the certain portion that belongs to you and the rest belongs to me. Every part of your day and every sphere of your life belongs to God. So it's not like, okay, God, you bless me in my career, but I'll choose my spouse. Or God, you know, you take care of healing my body, but you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of raising my kids. No, every part of life belongs to him. So in an interaction with the Lord, right? As you're in the word, you're, you're surrendering every area. You're saying, Lord, I thank you for my marriage today. Lord, what is your plans and purposes? Are there things in me that I need to grow and change it? Lord, how do I speak wisdom to my ch children at this time or situation, right? You're inviting the Lord into everything. So practical day to day is that you have a sensitivity to the spirit of God. And for some people, they're like, I don't even know what that means. How do I start doing that? Well, it does start from your time with the Lord every day, but then the aspect of meditating. So you take those verses and you take those things into your day and you're asking the Holy Spirit. This is why being filled with the Holy Spirit is imperative to day-to-day -to -day relationship because you're saying, Holy Spirit, would you show me, would you bring to mind and my attention uh, to be aware of something? Sometimes I'll just be like, I think my daughter just lied to me, right? And I'll be like, hey, <laughs> right? Like sometimes like the Holy Spirit will like help me in parenting, right? And be like, hey, let me hold on quick. Come here. I need to ask you a question. And they're just looking at me like, how do you know? <laughs> Mama has the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. You're just inviting the Holy Spirit into every part of life. And I think that's, I mean, we get into a lot of number of practical things, but I think for me, I just, I just find a connection to the Holy Spirit of how he activates, reminds me of the word throughout the day. And you said it earlier to, um, when we were, when you were ministering, talking about trusting in the Lord with all your heart and leaning not on your own understanding yeah. in all your ways, acknowledging him yeah. and truly allowing him to, to direct your paths. And, and that's the, the wonderful thing about our relationship with the Lord is, you know, <laughs> You, you have to love life in Christ. You have to love God and you, you love Jesus because he is the only one in his word where he promises he'll never leave us or forsake us. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, I mean, I don't care what belief system you, you walk in, there's so many expectations, but very little help. You look at the word of God and this is what makes it, this, this is one of the things that, that separates it from everything else. This is why we know it's the truth because Jesus just didn't stay up in heaven and say, oh, poor people on earth. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish they just, if they just turn to me and, and repent, then I would heal them. No, he said, okay, they need an example. They need a savior. So he came down here on, on earth and he lived his life and he gave us his spirit. So now we have fellowship. We have relationship with God. And if we'll trust in him in all of our ways and acknowledge him, he, it's his promise that he'll direct our paths. And that's the beautiful thing about relationship with him. Amen. So, okay, another question. This is from Ghost Rider on YouTube. And they ask this, many people are not experiencing abundance, especially in health. It is, is it their fault or a function of time? I know so many people who are believing and not walking in abundance. Well, I think this is the dynamic. Is it, is it 
is it their fault or is it a, what did you say a function of time and um, maybe not quite understanding what you mean function of time maybe just kind of like an age maybe but I do believe that some of the things some of the reasons we're not walking in health is our fault in the sense of we don't know what we've been delivered from we my says my people perish for a lack of understanding so many times if we don't understand the word of god if we're not wa- knowing how to apply it right if we're not walking in the revelation then we just accept it like oh well the doctor said this so i guess this is how i'm going to do it and what we do is because we don't understand the word right or we don't have we don't believe in that moment then yes we will we will let sickness rule and reign in our lives and so yes i do believe there's some things that are our fault and so at that moment we're like lord teach me lord guide me lord show me what is the truth right we get into the word of god and that's when you can see somebody not know truth accept sickness walk in it for years and then get revelation and then what all of a sudden start to see the 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 manifestation of their healing taking place when the doctors say that's not possible well i guess you're getting better i don't know what happened why because you made a shift from having a lack mentality that this is my lifestyle to wait a minute this is not who i am this is not what god's given me and so yes i believe that as we get to know the lord then there's that revelation and so and and people would say you know well with age and time you just got to accept i'll just say this i mean you can speak to your body and your body can respond Mm -hmm. and so you don't have to just accept age and life and you don't have to accept Mm -hmm. those things because god wants to also bring the supernatural to your everyday life and yes there are a lot of people that are standing right now for promises, but they have not yet seen it. So does that mean that God is against you? Does that mean his word doesn't work? No, sometimes it just means that the enemy is, he is just, man, it, he is just, he's resisting you. And what do you do? You resist the devil and he flees. So it's again, taking that word of God and declaring the abundance and you continue having done all to stand. You stand today because you know you have an attitude of victory that no matter what I see today, I know it belongs to me. And so many times people will get discouraged in their pursuit and they give up before it's time. You know, and transformation happens by the renewing of our minds, Romans chapter 12, verses one and two, that we're to present ourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord, which is our reasonable service and not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Transformation sometimes does take some time. It does. You think about a person walking in, in as, uh, as Ghost Rider said, a person walking in sickness, you know, oftentimes what a person's mentality is, is when they slowly become sick, it takes them a while to begin seeing themselves as healed. So true. And it's important for us to be able to walk that journey with people as they're renewing their minds according to the word of God. Because oftentimes when people don't become become sick, not, not all at once, they become sick over time, they see themselves in a wheelchair, they see themselves um, hooked up to a machine, they see themselves that way. And there's been so many diagnoses over them they've convinced themselves that this is who they are. It's a, it takes a while sometimes, but the word of God always works. And it's never the seed's fault. It's always the ground's fault. So and when I say fault, it's, it's the way that we change the way we think. We are being transformed. This, the seed is always perfect. The word of God is always perfect. But sometimes it takes us time to walk it out. That's why we don't grow weary in doing good, because in due season, we will reap the promise of God if we do not lose hope. That's good. So last question, I know uh, this time has gone by by fast. And again, thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, Gary on YouTube asked this question, talking and having a firm faith are two different things. How can I know the real difference? So talking and having a firm faith. Well, you know. One's lip service and one's the actual things. Well, the Bible talks about, you know, not just being hearers of the word, but being doers. There you go. Because if we're just hearers of the word, we can deceive ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so you and I can parrot a lot of things. Well, how are you today? Well, I'm blessed, healed, and whole. But inside you're thinking something different, right? You're like, yeah, whatever, <laughs> right? So I think this is, this is the dynamic of what I've seen, the difference between talking and feeling like you have a firm faith. It comes out in an attitude. And when I say an attitude, it's this ability to have the confidence that I don't care what I see, I don't have to, I don't have to tell everybody. I know that I know. And yes, my words will match up with what I know, but you have to have an assurance 
It's the confidence of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I don't care what I see today. I know it. And I don't care what I'm hearing. I know the truth. You know, I don't care about the timeline they've given me. I know my God is well able, right? It's this, it's this response to when negative things comes. Your faith doesn't just speak to it, meaning, oh, well, my God can do this. And then inside you're still full of doubt and unbelief. It's an attitude of belief that as you speak, right, now it's coming out not just as some Christianese, some parroting of something, what somebody else said. It's I know in my knower because I've gotten a revelation and God showed me and I don't care what the devil brings, hell or high water, I'm going to see the promises of God. Amen. And it's a confidence and a boldness that then starts to betray itself in an attitude. And the word says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And uh, as we understand that, as we're sowing the seed in, um, Andrew says this all the time that I don't have to be there when you plant the seed to know what you planted. I have to be there. I can be there when you reap the crop. Yeah. And honestly, if we're planting in faith, we will reap it. And that's, that to me is a big sign. Mm -hmm. If a person's walking in faith, they, were, they are going to reap it because God does not respond to need. God responds to faith. And because that's the language of the Lord. Yeah. And so understanding that, you know, you, you plant the seed, the word of God is the seed. If you do it in faith, you will reap every single time and you will reap exactly what you're, what you're sowing. So Amen. it's amazing. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really truly do appreciate it. I believe this was a blessing to you all. And uh, Carrie, thank you so much for sharing. Oh, both. Both, both of us shared. So oh, well, we want to encourage you again, check out um, the things that are going on here in Colorado, awmi.net slash events. Check that out and please call our prayer line tonight. If you're going through different situations and you feel like you've kind of lost hope, you're discouraged, you're like, I don't know how to see things. I just feel like the enemy is just constantly stealing, <clears throat> killing and destroying. I'll just tell you that there's God's abundant life for you today. And so let us pray with you. So call our prayer line. The number's there on the screen. We'd love to join you in prayer, speak God's word, God's life, God's abundance of your situation so that you in that moment can say, yeah, that's who I am. I receive that. Yeah. And so you can leave that conversation full of faith and believing that your situations are turning around. We want to remind you that God has an awesome plan for your life. So don't settle for anything less Amen. than God's very best. So thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again very soon. God bless you. Sometimes a gift. Once upon a time, many years ago, in the ancient land of Persia, can change your life forever. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 